We can just burn oil or coal forever. Oh no, not forever. Wait, it's gonna run out someday. So when do we start developing the alternatives? When we think about the solutions that we try to build for the future, uh, the more sustainable solutions, for example, for our transportation and other energy uses, we have to think about what is the route from the source of the energy to the use of the energy. Instead of waiting 300 million years for sunlight to create plant matter and to decay and decompose and turn into petroleum, why, you can use it directly. A photovoltaic module just converts sunlight into an electric current and you can do useful work with it. Basically, we mount the solar panels out on the south side so it's facing the sun. When the photons from the sun strike the silicon in the panel, it generates DC electricity, which we wire through an inverter to change it to alternating current AC, which is what comes out of your outlets, and then back feeds a circuit breaker in the main panel and into the grid. Electric cars and renewable energy sources make a really good match. First of all, more we have electric cars on the roads, there will be more demand for renewable energy sources. It's the mass production of the vehicles and what really gets left out of the equation, and I want to emphasize it's building the infrastructure in our communities, making sure that new homes and new commercial buildings have the proper electric outlets for people to plug in. If you were to take a solar electric system and install it in order to offset the energy needed by this electric vehicle, an interesting thing about the return on investment happens. You're offsetting perhaps $2.50 a gallon for gasoline. If you assume that you're driving maybe 12,000 miles a year with your electric vehicle, uh, you would spend $1,200 a year on gasoline if you were driving a regular 25 mile per gallon car. An electric vehicle, however, doesn't use any gasoline. So if you took that money that you would normally spend on gasoline and used it to offset pay for your electric system, it would pay for itself in just 5.8 years. It costs about a penny a mile to operate as far as electricity goes. If you include the replacement cost of batteries, it's about three cents a mile. In my round numbers, I like to say you save about 50 cents a mile every time you choose to use an electric vehicle over a gasoline-powered vehicle. Uh, electric vehicles are going to be technically much simpler than the present time traditional cars that we have. If you think about, for example, engines that we have in our cars at the moment, they have hundreds of moving parts in them, whereas in electric motor, there's just one moving part. As you can see under the hood of an electric vehicle, there's very few mechanical parts. There's basically a motor, there's an electrical charger for the batteries, a controller that regulates the whole system. The only maintenance on a, an electric vehicle, regular maintenance, is put air in the tires and plug it in when you're not using it. By contrast, an internal combustion engine has a radiator and carburetors and spark plugs and all sorts of parts that need maintaining and fluids. Smart grid is a term that refer refers to appliances being able to communicate with our utility grid. The dumb grid, power flows one way. It flows from the utility generating plant to you, the user. With an electric vehicle, there's a special component that it can add to a smart grid. One of the things that we're lacking in renewable energy is a way to store that energy so that we can have power at nighttime when the sun isn't shining. The exciting thing about, uh, about hybrid vehicles that have batteries is that you now have storage driving around on wheels. So with a really integrated smart grid, the electric vehicle can, can be available backup power source for the grid if it's properly uh, communicating with the grid. And when connected, with the photovoltaic panels, meaning you can get the energy straight from sun to charge your cars, that will make a really good combination. It'll be sustainable, it'll be clean, it'll be affordable. It's just a great match when you put those two together. The big oil companies and car companies have many powerful lobbyists, but ultimately it's the people that need to get together and get organized in order to make these changes happen. So I implore the public uh, to join with uh, grassroots organizations that are promoting these policies and um, be a part of these efforts, uh, both at City Hall, at the State Capitol, 
and in Washington, D.C.